for the most updated version of the Glyphs RPG Blueprint, tokens, accessories and resources, please visit www.glyphsrpg.com. Also visit 2ddice.com for our internationally popular D20 RPG coins and our other masterful coin works. Chapter 16 of the Glyphs RPG Blueprint um, deals with character development. So thank you for joining me today. So when we say character development, we're basically talking about experience points and how you can better improve your character over time the more you keep playing. Now, my approach to character development is very non-linear and more organic, unlike you know generally most other systems out there. I just think that this whole notion of tying a character's performance to a stat, you know, just by killing things over and over again just doesn't make sense. I, I think it's that's a dumb, I think it's outdated, and my approach to leveling up your character is basically you get rewarded for what you put in um, for specific tasks, okay? To me that makes much more sense, and really, not just that, it gives you a different experience. So, you know, no two, play, no two people will play the same character the same way. Everything will be different as you develop your character. So I think that's a really great approach. So, long story short, you get rewarded for what you do specifically, and that's how you develop your character. So there's not one static number that, that defines your character. So I think this is a really great way um, to look at everything. So let's talk about that here in development. Let's look at what we mean. So first, we're gonna go over the um, different types of experience points that you'll receive based on what you do. And then um, we'll talk about the character's combat level. So let's get started real quick. This is going to be a pretty straightforward um, session. So first, um, here, or on page 287, we have attribute, experience, and powers experience. So attribute experience really, in my opinion, are, are some of the hardest ones to accumulate because basically that affects your character's um, raw physical and mental performance, okay? so. If you'll notice here, there's a brief description on the different types of experience. And then here we're going to have some general examples on how to get them for attributes. These are some general examples and the things your character can do to earn them uh, per um, attribute. Okay, And at the bottom here, each one has a small description on the specific number of points are allotted uh, per usage. So just take note of that here, here, and here, last couple pages. Each section will be broken down in a similar manner. So just keep that in mind when you're reading through the book, which you definitely should be reading by now. Okay, so as an example, let's look at attributes. So attributes, they define you know your character's performance, um, and they're basically a direct representation of your character's you know social status and their lifestyle. So how does your character on a daily basis, that's going to be reflected in their in their attributes. Okay, so here, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there are some general examples on how to earn experience points to boost your attributes up. Okay, so let's look at the bottom here. Now, for attributes, experience points are rewarded at a base rate of one experience point per successful instance per day. So, when 100 experience points are earned, um, then the specific, the um, attribute that you're using increases by plus one rank. So, again, that tells you how to earn it. These are some general examples. Obviously, this doesn't account for every situation, but you know, a good architect will know exactly how to reward them and whatnot. Okay. So, next we're going to get into powers, experience points. Okay. So powers, you know, magical spells, you know, other abilities, you know, pertaining to uncanny archetypes. That's what we're talking about here, right? Magical spells, superpowers, all that cool stuff, okay? So when a character successfully uses a power on its intended target, they're automatically awarded experience for that particular power in use, okay? So the target doesn't necessarily have to be dead or destroyed or anything. As long as that power successfully affects it and hits its target, you get credit for using that power, okay? So very instant reward um, scenario going on here. So. Let's see. Now, with powers, there's two ways you could look at it, okay? You could use that experience point that you receive towards increasing your powers level. So powers are level 
okay? So the more you max it out, the stronger it becomes and all that cool stuff, as we've already seen, okay? So you could level it up, or you can use that to, um, let's see here, to, to possibly earn a new power, okay? You could do that too. So as it says here, so either the character can earn an additional rank in a power, so from one to three, like we talked about, or, you know, maybe they want the opportunity to learn a brand new power. If they want to go that route, then that brand new power is learned at a level one. So, you know, again, you may have that one guy that wants to completely max out all his powers before getting a new one. That's great. A lot of people do that. Or you could have a guy getting his experience points and learning a new power each time. Okay. So, for look at how many it takes to earn a new rank or a power. So, with powers, one point is rewarded per successful use in a combat sensitive or otherwise relevant scenario depending you know on the case okay so with powers the base experience points are multiplied by the entity's threat modifier score when they're awarded so again we'll talk about entities in a later chapter but every entity has a threat modifier score which is sort of like a level that's going to function as a multiplier per experience so keep that in mind that's very important when we're talking about development here okay so with powers, when you reach 50 experience points, then you can choose to either earn a new power or level up your power by one rank up to, up to level three, okay? So that's powers. Next, let's talk about hand-to-hand -hand or H2H experience points, okay? So H2H EXP is awarded to characters that successfully hit or defeat an enemy. Um, using some form of hand-to-hand -hand combat, martial arts, boxing, grappling, all that cool stuff, okay? Now, they don't necessarily have to die um, as long as victory is clearly de decided or, you know, you clearly, you know, clobbered the guy hand-to-hand, -hand. I mean, depending on the situation, okay? Or you may have, you know, a martial arts character who's really practicing his drills, he's very dedicated, and um, you could award him that way, too, if that's how they want to play their character, Okay? Okay, so one thing to note is, depending on how they're used, experience is awarded differently. Okay, so let's take a look at that here at the bottom of the H2H section. So, as far as H2H experience goes, it's awarded at a rate of one um, EP, or one experience point EXP, per contact with an opponent. So, like in a tournament or otherwise, something like that, or one a day if you're doing a practice drill. So. You've got the, the fighter character doing his, you know, beating up on his Wing Chun dummy or a punching bag, and that's pretty much their routine for the day or, or that period of time or whatever, then they would get an experience point for that, okay? Now, let's see. Now, okay. If they're fighting an opponent, though, that experience point, like with powers and so forth, gets multiplied by the entity's threat mod. If you're fighting something more threatening and dangerous, then you definitely get more credit towards that, right? You get in, you get what you, you put into this system, okay? So let's see. Now with H2H, when you hit 50 experience points total, then the character earns a proficiency rank, okay? Up to plus three, okay? Now each proficiency rank, as we're gonna see here with weapons, gives you an additional token slide, okay? The more proficient you are, the more likely you are to hit your target is what that translates to, okay? So let's see. Now, like with weapons, H2H proficiency can be increased to a maximum of plus three. So with proficiencies, as we're going to talk about, you can only get up to a plus three, which means you get plus three token slide opportunities, which makes you more effective. That's what that means, okay? So now let's talk about ether experience real quick. Now, ether experience, you could sort of liken it to the classic hack and slash. You get rewarded just for killing stuff and and you gain experience just by killing enemies, right? This is probably the closest thing you're gonna to get to that. So with Ether experience, basically, you're rewarded in combat, okay? And when that happens, you absorb a part of their life force into your character's etheric field, and that's essentially the logic behind it. So I guess this is the closest thing to conventional experiences you might see here, and the most common one in combat, so Ether experience. So. When a character defeats an enemy in combat, um, a fragment of their life force is assimilated and into the character, which makes their, gives them more EP ultimately is what we're trying to say. So, let's see. 
So look at the bottom here. Um, Ether EXP is awarded at equivalent rate of the enemy's remaining Ether points per victory. So whatever Ether points are remaining from the enemy, that's what you get at a base rate. So let's take a look here. So when 25 uh, experience points are earned, the character's EP total increases by plus one. So every 25 experience points, you get your character gets an, an extra ether point added that they can use for powers or techniques. So that's a very nice way to level up again. Probably the more conventional approach that we're used to seeing, something similar anyways. Now, if there was a team effort that took to kill the monster, which is very common, then you know, ideally the architect would divide the experience points to the party. It's up to them. I mean, at that point it's really up to the architect, but Ideally, you would want to divide it if it was a team effort to make it fair for all your combatants, okay? So, let's see, techniques, experience. So, we're still on page 288. Let's look at techniques real quick. Okay, now techniques, like we've talked about, it's a mental discipline or a very special maneuver that gives you an edge during combat, okay, in very, you know, volatile situations. So, when a character uses a technique... And 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 they 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 um they successfully use it shall I say then experience is automatically awarded towards the attainment of a new t experience is awarded at a rate of one point per successful use in a relevant situation generally combat okay so the base exp points are then multiplied by the entity's threat modifier and then awarded so once again back to the multipliers when you hit fifty experience points then you have the option of learning a new technique okay now. One thing on techniques real quick, and I may have touched on this during the techniques chapter, I don't remember, but I believe I did. Let's say you've got the guy that just makes something up out of thin air, right? And he, he's not trained in technique, but he sees some martial arts guy, or he wants to imitate the cool guy, and just does something really crazy, and he's very descriptive, and he says, you know what, I'm going to try to do this move, right? You can let him do that. Now, in the technique rules, like we mentioned earlier, there'll be multiple token slides involved to try to pull that off because that person's untrained but if they're good enough in their token slides then by all means let them have it give them the technique and um that's another way they could level up okay if somebody's really good at their token slides that that is definitely another approach too but generally we're going to be doing you know the traditional way which is based on what you use okay so now let's move down uh, let's see page 289 Okay, we're talking about weapons experience and skills experience. So let's talk about weapons real quick. Okay, weapons are, um, are very important um, as far as proficiencies go, okay? Now, to use a weapon, okay, here's this annoying Avast again. Let me shut this down. All right, so with weapons, now anybody who's had any kind of weapons or martial arts training knows what I'm talking about, okay? So... We're going to look at weapons at three different levels here. So first you have the untrained level, okay? So you got a character that just randomly picks up whatever weapon is in range to fight the monster that's coming in. They're not necessarily trained to use that, okay? That's what we're reflecting here. So they're, um, that's a brand new weapon, and they need to be practiced with to become trained. Now, by default with untrained, uh, when you're using a, train, a weapon you're not trained with, okay? It must land, you must land an additional token slide in order uh, to be able to use a focus attack, right? So what that's trying to say is any idiot can shoot a gun or any idiot can pick up a sword and swing it, okay? We all know that. That doesn't mean they know how to use the weapon. Anybody with training will tell you that. So that's what we're representing here, okay? Now, if you're untrained and using a weapon, okay, not only do you have the additional token slide, but also... Um, your combat modifiers are nullified due to lack of proper training with that weapon, okay? Additionally, you're not able to properly counterattack if you're using that untrained weapon. Again, you, can, you might be able to shoot a pistol or swing a sword very sloppily, but that's about all you can do, okay? That's what that means with untrained. Let me just clarify that. Then here we have the trained level, okay? So this is a character who's been adequately trained using a specific weapon, okay? So they can use a free form and a focus attack, okay? They can use all their modifiers, all the good stuff. This is somebody who knows what they're doing with a particular weapon. Pretty cut and dry, right? Finally, we have proficient. This is what I'm talking about. This is where we get into different experience levels here. So proficiency 
means that the character has advanced training and practical experience with a weapon. So this is somebody who's above and beyond the normal guy who just got out of the academy, right? So when you're proficient, um, it allows near seamless execution of attacks, okay? So furthermore, so uh, proficiency can be increased from plus one up to plus three. So each proficiency rank, as you'll see here, it's already in writing, gives you an additional token slide when you're trying to use that weapon. So let's say you got a broadsword and you're plus one proficient, right? And you do your token slide and it misses. Well, because you're plus one proficient, you get an extra attempt to token slide with that weapon, which makes it more likely you're going to hit your target. That's what we mean by proficiencies, okay? So let's see, let's talk about the experience points portion here. So weapon experience is awarded at a base rate of one point per successful attack with a specific weapon. Or if you got a guy practicing like crazy his drills all day, then you get one a day also for that, okay? We could also factor that in. Now, in combat, the base experience points are multiplied by the entity's threat modifier and they're awarded accordingly. Again, you, uh, you want to get rewarded for fighting crazier stuff, right? That's the logic here, okay? When 50 experience points are earned, the character becomes proficient plus one. Okay, if for some reason they're currently only trained or if they're already proficient, then a plus one proficiency rank is earned with a maximum of plus three. If for some reason that character is untrained and they're good enough that their token slides, then guess what? They could use this to get to become trained with it. That's how you have random guys picking up weapons and realizing, oh my God, I'm actually pretty good using this weapon, right? And they get better and better with practice and experience. So. In here, there's a lot of opportunity for growth and potential. That's what we're trying to show here, okay? Next, let's talk about skills experience. So, you know, every time you use a skill successfully, then you get credit towards using that skill, okay? So there's two ways we could look at it. You can use the experience point levels towards earning an extra rank in your skills from one to five, okay? or you can use the experience points earned to learn a new skill at a level one, just like we did with powers, right? So let's see. So let's see. So by default, any new skill is obtained at a level one or novice level. Okay, so unless there's formal training or apprenticeship, right? Uh, characters who manage to successfully use a skill they're unskilled with, I mean, really should remain uneligible to develop that skill and because sometimes success can be treated as beginner's luck. Now again, other architects may disagree with me on that and they could certainly weave that into the story. That's totally fine with you, but that's how we look at it. A skill takes a long, long time to develop, right? So, but you know, some people may feel otherwise, that's totally fine, but let's see here. So at the bottom, let's take a look, page 289. Skill experience is awarded at a rate of one per successful use during a skill set challenge, right? When 10 experience points are earned, the character can learn a new skill or increase their skills level life by plus one rank. So from novice all the way to master in that particular skill, okay? Now, you'll notice here at the bottom, there's some optional award on multipliers there. I think that's a great addition, an optional addition that I added because you're rewarded not only just for using the skill, but using it based on the skill's difficulty in the situation so there is definitely that piece there that makes it worth your while so at the architect's discretion experience for skill set challenges can be done um and multiples according to their difficulty right so ideally i only recommend doing this for campaign sessions that at least are a month or two apart i know in my case i'm at least a month or two apart from the ones that i run i can only speak for myself but the idea behind this isn't just a reward for the difficulty and skill but also because of the human element in time because a lot of us take time to be able to meet up and play so that's that's factored in there to kind of level the playing field a little bit okay so take a look at this here and it'll show you the different multipliers so let's say you have a character who used a skill okay and the challenge level was worthy right so one times three is three. So they get three experience points if they complete that challenge. Again, that's there to help level the playing field, you know, against time um, that we get to play, okay? So now let's move on um, to the next uh, section. We're gonna talk about combat.
on the final page here of the development chapter is the um, subject of combat level. So what is a combat level? Basically, it is a fluid um, figure that, um, that represents your, your character's overall effectiveness in combat and how well they can handle a threat. So treat it sort of like a character level like you do in, see in other games. I guess that is a way you can see it, but it's not necessarily a static figure. And you'll also notice that when you make a new character, there, there's um, probably never such thing as a true level one character. I, I look at things more as tiers, you know, a range of values. That's how we treat that's how we treat levels in this game, okay? So combat level basically tells me how dangerous your character is, okay? And I do that basically to see what kind of challenge I think you can handle in battle, right? So I don't want a tier one character facing up against, you know, a much stronger opponent. That wouldn't be very fair unless you have a good team. So that's essentially the whole purpose behind a combat level. So when I look at combat level, I look at three things, and again, here you will see the calculation. I, I suggest you read that and see for yourself how I come up with it. And on your character booklets, you'll notice certain sections that have um, the, the fields that I'm going to talk about. So combat level, there's three key things. I'm looking at arsenal level, which tells me how dangerous we are with your certain weapons, how skilled you are, right? Then we have technique level, so um, how many techniques do you have? You know, because again, techniques can completely change a combat scenario altogether. And finally, powers level. So if your character has powers, how many powers do you have and how leveled are they? So those three things really, from a numerical standpoint, give me a pretty good idea of your character's overall effectiveness level in combat. That's essentially the logic behind this. And yes, this can fluctuate a little bit and it'll grow over time as you become a stronger tiered character. Okay, so real quick here, this is a um, calculation that shows you how to get your character's combat level. Very simple averaging, and like I said, on your character booklet, there are some fields there that ask you to put that number in. So on the very front sheet of your character a booklet, you can put your total combat level in. So when the game master asks to see your um, character sheet, they can look at that number and give it, get a pretty good idea of what you can and can't handle before they throw it at you. So that's the purpose behind that, okay? Take a look at that section here, be more familiar with it, and um, you'll see what I mean. So real quick here, last topic on page 290 is the very bottom. You'll notice something called arcade mode, right? So that was intended for one session campaigns, okay? A lot of people, a lot of game masters go to conventions, they do trade shows, they have, you know, all these crazy events going on and they need or a demo a lot of demos too on the sales floor you see a lot of stuff like that so a campaign or one you know a four all the way to a six and even eight hour session i know i do a lot of those myself when i go to trade shows i'm pretty involved with the community that is a pretty common thing at least for me and i know other people in the industry as well so i had to come up with something to reward these people too okay for their time so in arcade mode we're looking at one session campaign so Players should be rewarded for their participation in the campaign. So, let's see. If you're using, if you're, if you're, if you're playing that kind of campaign, you know, one that's very, you know, for one player or very limited, you know, number of sessions or whatever, it's recommended to implement the following, you know, arcade style. Okay, it is very much an arcade style character leveling because you want to reward them for participating. Okay, because we all know at the end of the session the characters are going to be gone. It's completely pointless at, at that point, right? So here for powers, during a um, arcade mode session, um, one new power uh, per level after using a power three times. So they can either get a power or a level after they use a power three times, flat out. For techniques, they get one new technique after using a technique three times. For skills, they, get, they learn one new skill or level after using a skill twice. For ether, they get plus T4, so remember we talked about tiered, the element glyphs, and this came times four, EP, after defeating any opponent. So right off the bat, you get tier four ether points after defeating an opponent in combat. Okay, very quick and seamless and um, rewarding process. Finally, here we get the H2H and weapons. So in HTH, hand to hand, we get plus one proficiency after two successful attacks. So if you clobber the guy a couple times successfully with your fists or grappling, 
you get rewarded for that. And finally, weapons, you earn plus one proficiency after two successful attacks. So that is a quick snapshot of arcade mode. Now, architects out there, feel free to tweak the, uh, the thresholds here at your leisure. That's fine. But by default, I think this is a pretty fair way to reward people who are using those specific abilities. Okay, so... That pretty much covers it for the development chapter again. I think that approach makes more sense than what we're used to seeing out there. It's not so cookie cutter more effectively and really get involved um, in the process, okay? So that's it for um, the character development. Now we're gonna move on to the next chapter which deals with currency. Thank you for your time.